I am Jeff Ado. This is Lunacy, where we discern the sacred from the insane and admit that whether we like it or not, we are all profoundly affected by the cycles of the moon. How? Where's the 20% howl, man? <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're frozen. Man, that's what I got. That came from the heart. <laughs> I left all my howls in the desert this past weekend. Man, there was no howl. You got a wolf behind you, and you're not howling, Brent. Oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm like a sick wolf. Perfect. That's good. That's good. At least you know. Yeah, I mean, you're you do have the actual wolf behind you, so I feel like you know you're you're making up. That's for it. the wolf energy that I bring it's to like the space today. Yeah, imagery. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> my guest today is. Brent Pella, he's a hilarious comedian. He just did a great stand-up special called, what's the name of the special? Conscious Bro. Yeah. Conscious it's Bro. A, it's, yeah, it's out on YouTube now. It's out on YouTube. And uh, it's great. Super great. We also got to see him live in Sacramento, which was a <laughs> an interesting show. <laughs> we get yep. into that a little bit. Uh <laughs> And uh, and his live show is amazing. If you get a chance to see Brent Powell live, I highly, highly recommend it. You will laugh your face off. It's super good stuff. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Stoked to be here. I appreciate yeah, you, right dude. On. Yeah, right on, right on. So, um, so yeah, just, to, I guess, just kind of initial questions. Like, how did you, you grew up in, uh, take us a little bit about your journey to comedy. Like, how did you get here? You grew up in Southern California. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Northern California, actually oh right God. outside of Sacramento in Davis, California. Okay. Bounced around a little bit, lived in Arcata up in Humboldt County for a couple years, um, then back to Davis, uh, Seattle for two years as well. Uh, it was just me and my mom for a while, so she she brought me up in Davis, and then uh, I went to college at UC Santa Cruz for two years, followed by a transfer to UC Santa Barbara for two years. And I was doing some comedy videos in college. And then when I moved to L.A. immediately after graduating, <clears throat> uh, I started working as an assistant on a lot of commercials and music videos. And I kept doing comedy video stuff like on a low level just for fun with friends. And around that time I moved to L.A., uh, I started throwing myself on stage to do open mics. And, and I took some, some sketch comedy classes. I went through a whole improv theater program out in L.A., improv and sketch. And uh, I was inspired just by being around other people in L.A. that were doing all these things in a big way. And I came from just doing it in a small way in my little like college community. So I was first introduced to the idea of comedy as a career when I got down to L.A. And that inspired me just to work on my writing, work on my my creativity. And um, it all kind of started growing from th those early days. Cool. Where did you study uh, sketch and such? I went through this theater called The Groundlings out in L.A., which oh, yeah. is a really cool sketch comedy theater that a lot of good folks have came up through. Kristen Wiig, Molly Shannon, uh, Will Ferrell, Anna Gasteyer. Um, and then UCB is the other improv theater program out in L.A., founded by Tina Fey, Amy Poehler. Um, a lot of other folks went through that, Seth Meyers and, and some others. So I, I was just I was trying to be a sponge and just absorb as much as I could in those early couple of years to, to try and like broaden my understanding of what comedy could be and, and who I was as a performer. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a really cool period. That's awesome. Yeah. I did, uh, I did groundlings myself actually. Oh, right on. Yeah. How'd you like it? Did you, you remember enjoying it? Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. I did it up through uh, writing lab and then cool. I got booted. Uh, yep. <laughs> I didn't make the cut. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. It was great. Really, really amazing uh, people there and like super fun format. It's one of the things that I miss about living up here now is that there's not really that kind of a school or environment. But, you know, yeah. trade offs. Uh, yep. So there you go. And then, so like a lot of your. I, f I feel like probably most of your comedy centers around, you know, making fun of, you know, poking fun at the spirituality kind of and the sort of the new age. I don't know what we call it now. Or are we new age? We're like fucking the next new age. You know what I mean? I think we're new age. I think new age is a good enough term to yeah. to encompass, you know, 
these new 21st century philosophies and approaches toward old school spirituality. Um, but yeah, man, my, my mom was kind of a hippie growing up. She had me young. She was like 22. Okay. And she was a deadhead hippie. So she was like, you know, an eighties hippie, which is a really weird <laughs> kind of hippie. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so she raised me, uh, going to Grateful Dead shows and, uh, reggae festivals and, um, things like that. So I kind of had, I grew up with, uh, hmm. kind of a unique sense of spirituality and then found sports and, and friends and partying through high school and college. And then coming out of college, started going to transformational festivals with a good buddy of mine. It helped me rediscover a, a side of myself that I had um, not fully connected with since I was a, a young child, pretty much. But yeah, to, to poke fun at that space is, is always from a place of love. Um, I like to say that it, everything I poke fun of is uh, it, it comes from a place of love, except for politicians. There's not really much love <laughs> if I'm mocking uh, president, presidential candidate, or any politician. So. <laughs> yeah, here, here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your bit about uh, Donald Trump doing Molly, and your, I don't want to spoil it for everybody, but yeah. it's fucking, that is the funniest Trump joke I've ever heard. Thanks, Super man. Good. Thank you. Yeah, inspired <laughs> by a truth philosophy. I, I do think more presidents should do drugs. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, hallucinogens. I actually have your poster yeah. in my garage right now. Which says psychedelics for politicians. Boom. Let's do yep. it. Let's get on board. That's the mission. That's I think the movement. we should just start slipping it to them. You know what I mean? Put it in that <laughs> yeah. fucking coffee in the morning. Before yeah, like a respectful breaks. roofie. Yeah. <laughs> but Molly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good idea. All right, good. That's great. So the NSA is going to be on this episode. They're listening for sure. That's I mean, they've been listening. You know? <laughs> they keep listening. I, I really don't. I'm not scared. But then also, so you, but you also yourself, I mean, you're, you're kind of into that whole thing. You, have you done, you've done some, you do like ayahuasca journeys and that kind of work. Yeah. I've been, um, working with, uh, different medicines and substances for the better part of the past 10 years. So I'm still very early in my, um, journey with, with those things as tools. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm still learning so much. Um, but a, a, a big tool for me has been microdosing psilocybin. I've, I've done that in, in periods quite often over the past couple of years. I've, I've sat in a fair amount of ayahuasca ceremonies when, <clears throat> when I felt called uh, to. And I've found some really good, um, really incredible growth that that has came from those experiences uh, both personally and creatively you know working with uh, different plant medicines or, or different medicines with the intention of um, creative inspiration creative growth and with the intention of navigating through any creative challenges or personal challenges that I'm dealing with has has usually led to uh, good progress for me so I, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for the uh, mindful use of different substances like that. Um, I've also seen the, the good that can come on a bigger scale from working with organizations like VETS, V-E-T-S, mm. uh, stands for Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions. It's this incredible organization. They send veterans with PTSD overseas for psychedelic assisted therapy that they can't get in the U.S., um, and it's typically Ibogaine, Ayahuasca, and or 5-MeO-DMT. And these guys, they come back completely changed. Their mm -hmm. PD, PTSD and, and suicidal tendencies, thoughts, or even actions sometimes are completely reversed. And it's, uh, it's incredible. And there's, there's strong science and research to back up the importance and the, the mindful use of some of these medicines. So... It's been cool to work closely with with organizations like that and, and see how psychedelics have really entered the the mainstream zeitgeist and are continuing to enter the mainstream you know consciousness as an alternate mode of healing. Yeah, yeah, it's really incredible how much healing can come, especially for for those guys. I know um, 
first of all, I commend you for doing that work and supporting those organizations. That's really awesome. I, I bought uh, I bought the psychedelics for politicians thing. All the proceeds went to uh, those guys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I donate I donate money per sale to vets, the the veterans exploring treatment solutions. They're awesome. It's it's an amazing group. I highly recommend you all go check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I I mean I know of. Uh, personally, like I interviewed uh, Vela Giri, who's a, a a good friend of mine and brother, and you know I actually went and did a mushroom ceremony with him, like out in the woods. Um, and you know he he also had has had meditation his whole life. Um, so coming out of Vietnam, like he discovered meditation, which I think I, he would argue also that saved his life. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, there's no question that doing those kind of plant medicine ceremonies and really like looking into your subconscious and releasing things and encountering whatever it is, whatever energies you encounter when you do that work <laughs> uh, is super helpful to like alleviating and clearing out those, you know, those kind of ghosts from the past, especially for those guys, you know? Totally. Yep. Yeah. It's important. Sweet. So let's talk about uh, morning routines. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, what'd you do this morning? What's your, uh, What's your go-to? Uh, I've been uh, the the main kind of tenet of my morning routine is a ten minute stretch. I just do a, a ten minute yoga flow. I try not to add too much to my morning routine because I don't want to get bogged down with two hours of stuff. It just seems so counterproductive. Um, so I, I usually wake up, cold shower, brush my teeth, stretch, mm -hmm. quick breath work thing for like a minute, maybe two minutes, um, and then I'm in. Then I'm in my nice. day. Yeah. 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 So That's nothing great. crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah. it helps. It just helps to get like movement. Oh, and then I chug a glass of water. Movement, cold, and water. Those are the three kind of main things I do to wake myself up and get going. Yeah. Yeah. I did uh, coffee enema this morning. Did you? I'm not joking. I right really up the did. butt, huh? Or right right straight up the asshole. <laughs> coffee How is that? Does it I'd, hurt? Is it uncomfortable? Wow. It is. Uh, it's something. It's something else. Let me tell you, Brent. Yeah. It feels. Um, I mean, the aftermath. Like right now, I feel amazing, and I really do. Like I really yeah. feel super energized. Now you could argue that's because I had a huge amount of caffeine going straight into my, you know, colon. Uh, so I'm sure it probably absorbs. You know, the kids these days are putting alcohol up there. You know, so coffee must also do something for you in that same regard. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's awesome. It's awesome. It's this coffee. The coffee comes from Switzerland. <laughs> Does it absorb through your butt? Like it, through your anus? I, I don't know. I mean, I definitely feel like I had some coffee and I didn't drink coffee. I just took it up the ass. All right. <laughs> so there That's you go. That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, uh, it does like, you know, it pulls all the, the theory is, and I believe the theory, which is why I did it. Uh, <laughs> that uh you know it, it pulls all the toxins out of your system so like you you sit with the coffee somehow like attaches itself to all the gunk that's been hanging out in your colon and then like pulls it out and i can say uh it it feels like that you know what i mean the yeah. the end analysis definitely feels like you know somebody went and like scrubbed the walls of my internal organs to to get out all the you know the shit that you've been hanging you, out there forever, you know. Do you take it with cream? Ah, uh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Uh huh. Cream, sugar. Uh, <laughs> I also have a uh, bidet, which I find is super helpful, <laughs> uh, especially for that. You know what I mean? Afterwards. Yeah. Easy, yeah, easy cleanup. Bidet, I think, is like that's the quickest way to change your life. Dude, I got to get a bidet because I'm tired of wiping my butt and looking at poop smudges on toilet paper. I think that's so weird. And it's I keep hearing gross. people talk about the bidet and I, I, I know it's used all over what Japan, right? Isn't that where it's Japan, France, all over Europe, everywhere. Yeah. Up in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, it really yeah. cleans you out better than toilet paper. It's it's great. It's a great solution for me anyway, personally, like I. Not to get into the details because I don't want to gross anybody out, but I mean, we're talking about it. I brought it up. So here we are. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it for anybody that has any sort of like issue with that and or like, 
whatever you have to go a few times in the day it's just it just makes everything so much cleaner and easier you know yeah. it's a nice warm splash of water there you know what i mean afterwards you wipe to check there's typically nothing there if there is you just hit the button again you know what i mean you go again uh i'm it's, down i'm it's down for the day i recommend the bio bidet 2000 cool. that's the one cool. i have it's got a remote control so you you know you can use it on your friends that's the idea. <laughs> From the other room. Yeah. Surprise. Like a super soaker. Gotcha. I did actually have one one instance where it did hit the ceiling. I don't know. It malfunctioned. It like, hit the ceiling? Yeah. It, uh, uh, I hope uh, nobody was sitting on it. No. No. Recently. I was just in the room. I had just had plugged the power out. out power out of came your mouth. Yeah. Turn you into a fountain outside yeah. of Italy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I did this morning. That's pretty exciting. I'm stoked about it. Um, you did, um, you also did Aubrey Marcus's podcast, which I listened yeah. to. It was fantastic. Thanks, man. Yeah. Big fan of that dude. You know. Yeah, he's great. He's, he's, uh, he's the real deal. Um, you know, I've, I've hung out with him for a good amount of time, become, uh, fairly good friends with him and some of the folks in his, his team. And, uh, you know, they just, they do good things for the world. I like, I like what they got going on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he has a whole fit for service thing, which is mm -hmm. pretty awesome. I'm actually part of that deal. I went, to, cool. I went to Arcadia, the first Arcadia. I love his podcast and, uh, and listening to him. I feel like he, he calls himself a psychonaut, which I think is hilarious, but he totally gets away with it. Um, <laughs> I mean, pretty much just means he totally goes super hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. With plant medicine, but he's also somebody that um, you know definitely is like a, a huge influence. I think for people in in this sort of realm and this world of like expanding spirituality and like looking at different resources and really confronting your own shadows and doing work that has you you know almost forces you to confront to look at you know your your your, your dark side. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, uh, a, a lot of what he's talking about these days is, um, his perspectives and theories toward the concept of the anti you. And I'm nowhere near, uh, equipped enough to have a full conversation about that, but highly encourage anybody who's interested in that kind of like um, shadow self topic to, to listen to what he's talked about because it's, it's some pretty cool stuff. We went in it, we went into it a good bit on his pod podcast talking about the anti you and how the anti you operates in a state of negativity and can come to form as intrusive thought, self doubt, and how important it is to stay true to your own authentic self and not let the anti you take up too much space or else you won't be able to accomplish anything you're working toward. Yeah. Yeah. There's a certain acknowledgement of that side of ourselves that is necessary and kind of an allowing for that to be also, you know, because yeah. everybody has it. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about also about the show that we saw you perform at in Sacramento because that yeah, was a cool. really interesting show. There was some yeah. heckling going on. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was one of the comments that I had for you was that the way that you handled that, that heckler was like really amazing. Both my wife and I kind of left the theater going, wow, that was something else. Do you remember that? Cool. Yeah, that's great, man. Thank you. Do, do you remember which day you guys came? We came on Thursday night. And okay, there was... Thursday, yeah. So... I, you asked somebody in front of me what their name was and where they were from. And I answered because I thought you were looking at me. And I said, I'm Jeff from Rough and Ready. And then we had that whole discussion oh, right. yeah. about that. And then the lady uh, next to me was like, oh, yeah, where they hang people. Yeah, uh, dude. So first off, you said you were from Rough and Ready, which apparently yeah. is is an actual town. That's where we are. California. I yep. So that was insane. <laughs> And then the chick next to you said, oh, yeah, that's where they hang people. Turns out she is the former mayor of Nevada City, which is hilarious. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So 
she might have been the one to call the shots on executions. I have no idea. Huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it was funny, man. You know, when, when people interrupt at a show, I definitely – I like to respond, but I don't really – like to get too mean. <laughs> so yeah. it was uh it was fun. That was a fun that was a fun weekend up there. I think you said uh shut the fuck up and I love you. Yep. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming. Yep. Shut the fuck up though. Really yep. shut Express the fuck up. Express gratitude but uh, also <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I mean I imagine that happens all the time. Have you had like some ne- seriously challenging incidents with people hackling you and whatnot? Uh if it feel I don't not necessarily if it if it ever feels like somebody is interrupting too much at a live show either the security will come over and tell them to stop or I will tell security to come over I'll be hmm. like hey security come over here yeah the guy that looks like a ghost right here that guy yeah tell him to shut the fuck up please <laughs> uh but I I've found that the people who come to my shows typically are not super disrespectful so they know how to allow the show to go on without trying to take up all the attention, which is nice because uh, you're not, you're not supposed to interrupt at a, at a live comedy show. That's not what it's for. So, uh, but yeah, I've been lucky enough to not have it come to the point where I need to like shut the whole show down or I have like a really negative interaction with anybody. Yeah. Nice. What do you have coming up next? Like what's going on these days for you? Are you performing certain places? Yeah, I've been performing at a lot more festivals lately. Um, I just got back from Lightning in a Bottle this past weekend. That's why I look okay. half dead. Uh, I'm continuing <laughs> to, I'm in recovery mode right now. <laughs> you're you're in, integrating. I'm integrating. Yeah, uh-huh. typically I'm not on camera when I'm integrating. So you guys get to see what corpse Brent looks like. Um <laughs> So yeah, I've been doing a lot more festivals, which is fun. Performed at Texas Eclipse last month in April. Uh, I'll be at Electric Forest in June. Um, new videos every week and and on tour quite a bit with this new hour of material that I'm uh, getting ready to potentially shoot as a new special. Uh, so yeah, man, just trying to, try to make it all happen. Trying to help everybody laugh their way through the madness, you know? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. How did you get into doing like festivals? Because that's not really, I mean, formerly that wasn't really a thing, you know? Yeah. Comedians are doing festivals like that. Yeah, I think, well, my style works well with the festival space because I think a lot of my audience is a festival attending community, right? Yeah, um, for sure. <clears throat> whether it's like the mainstream festival space, like a EDM rave or more in the transformative festival space, like lightning in a bottle or burning man. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of content that speaks to all of those audiences because I am that audience. I'm that guy. If I wasn't doing comedy, I would be consuming that type of content. So I, I really, I really enjoy making stuff that I like first and foremost. And that's helped me build, I think a pretty cool connection with the folks who like my stuff. Um, so having that connection uh, and when a festival or a booker recognizes that connection because maybe they've seen my stuff before or they've been recommended to check me out by a friend, it's opened the door for conversations that have led to opportunities to perform at festivals, which I've loved. And my festival set is much different than like a comedy club set. You know, I'm, at a comedy club, I can do 30 straight minutes on politics, but I'm not bringing that into the festival space because that's not really what people want to hear about and vice versa. At a festival, I might do a sound healing on stage with some bro from the audience, <laughs> but that doesn't quite translate to you know a comedy club in Oklahoma City. So it's been cool, and it's been a, a cool creative challenge to to build a, a set specifically for the festival scene, and then continue to build my comedy club show for uh, the the comedy club venue space. Hmm. And you're kind of the, I mean, you're probably the only, you're, you're the only person I know that's out there doing festival, comedy festivals, man. Like that. you know I mean? it, that's yeah. not really a thing for anybody else, I guess, right? You're yeah. pioneering the way, bro. Thank you, man. I'm trying. It's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. I, got a, I got a buddy named Alex Hooper, who's a hilarious stand-up comic. He does a lot of character stuff and, and festival comedy too. Uh, but yeah, you don't really see like comedy on, on many of the lineups for, for music festivals. And then... Mm-hmm. Whenever I do it, people come up to me and they're so stoked afterwards and they're so happy that, it, you know, the the festival is doing comedy. So I think it's 
a really cool opportunity to provide additional forms of entertainment and, and joy for folks in, at a festival. Yeah, it's super unique. That's really cool. I think actually I was at, um, I, we didn't get to go because we couldn't get in Brent at mm. High Vibe Festival a couple of years ago. Didn't you do a thing? Uh, I was at High Vibe two years ago. Yeah. And you did like a comedy thing. Up in, in Northern California? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a blast. That's my buddy's festival out in Cobb, California. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. Bummed you couldn't get in. But yeah. at least you got into Sacramento, so exactly. So I'm curious, like, do you find that you're like the the work that you did in terms of like plant medicine, like you got into that? You mentioned you, you got into that maybe like ten years ago, doing like ceremonies and such. Like, is there anything, any particular time that sticks out for you that like really was super transformative, where you were like, oh my god, this is like a whole different world that really like is feeding me in a different way or I saw something totally different in myself that I was able to heal. Yeah. You know, so when I was a kid, <clears throat> I was kind of like a, I was a spiritual little kid. I would look up at the stars and think about God and the universe and like energies of people and, and ener just energy in general as a concept. Uh, you know, my 10 year old brain would, would have all these weird existential thoughts and when I kind of rediscovered a lot of that way of uh, thinking was when I first started going to transformational festivals with my friend, Nate, uh, who goes by Equanimous. He's a great DJ. Oh yeah. He, yeah. He brought me to lightning in a bottle in 2016 for the first time. And um, that was my first experience with LSD uh, and with a, a larger dose of, of psilocybin. Uh, you did on, both of them? On, on two different nights, yeah. Okay, okay. And I remember having like a really profound experience with both. Um, you know, throughout the night, everything from, you know, the journey you go on at a festival over the course of eight hours at night, you know, from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh, it's wild. It was wild. It was crazy. It was, it was creative. It was silly. It was funny. It was intense. It was, there was dancing. There was lots of laughing. There were new connections made with people. There were moments of silence looking up at the sky. And I remember those types of experiences over the course of that first festival weekend, really opening my perspective toward the types of experience that, uh, that, humans just could have in general. And it was such a inspiration for me because I wanted to emulate that in my comedy. I wanted to emulate that type of experience of surprise and joy and laughter and creativity uh, in what I put out into the world, either through digital video content or live on stage or live performance. So uh, we ended up going to that festival together, just us two for three years in a row. And each of those years helped me just grow in, in a big way, personally and, and creatively. So those were the, that was kind of like the early years of, of me finding my, my style um, in combination with uh, finding my way through the festival space and, and on, a, on deeper kind of medicine journeys. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, something similar happened when I first sat in an ayahuasca ceremony, uh, that was the most intense experience I've ever had. And, um, you know, again, it kind of opened up my, my scope of understanding of what, uh, a human can experience and, and where you can go inside of yourself and what type of external space you could tap into when you're sitting with a medicine like that. Um, so all, it all has been very profound. Uh, and then on a smaller scale, like I said before, microdosing psilocybin has really helped me personally in a big way, figure out different, uh, ways of navigating lows of life. Cause I, I do have a lot of deep stress and anxiety from time to time. So I like to think of 
my personal career in life as like a constant up and down, constant ebb and flow. Uh, and I've, I've put a lot of work into trying to figure out how to navigate the low moments in between the highs um, in a healthier, more productive way. And microdosing psilocybin has been uh, a big part of that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I use it for migraines. Yeah. Cool. And, and it helps. It, uh, it totally works. Awesome. Um, you know, the, that and uh, cold plunge actually. Yeah. Um, I don't know for people out there, if you suffer from migraines, this is my solution. I, if I feel one coming on at, at night, then I'll do like an ice pack on the back of my head. And that actually helps because they, all the migraines start, start from the back of your head. Um, yeah. But then in the morning, if it's, if it's still there, um, I'll take a couple of Excedrin and uh, a couple of microdoses. And then the cold plunge really like totally clears it out. The cold plunge is also a really good thing for, I mean, you make fun of cold plunging a lot, which I think is awesome <laughs> <laughs> and should be made fun of quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see how tiny we can get our balls. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's really good for you. Yep. Uh, um, but, uh, <laughs> but it does totally alleviate uh, the, the migraine in like, like nothing else. I mean, it's crazy couple like three times in the cold plunge and uh and it's gone but i i similarly i've also found that microdosing mushrooms has been super helpful for me and also doing like routine you know either medicine journeys of some kind even if it's like even the way that i use uh marijuana actually i let's see when this podcast has aired i already aired an episode uh with aluna lua this girl who does like marijuana ceremonies which is a totally different, you know, I don't know about you, but I grew up like, you know, smoking weed, particularly like in college. It caught on for me. All right. I was into it. Uh, but Dude, it was... I didn't start smoking weed until a couple years ago. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So opposites. Wait, you, what? You yep. grew up in Humboldt County in Santa Cruz and fucking, come on. You didn't, mom yep. wasn't just handing you the joint at the, no, the dude, no. Dead concerts? <laughs> You're like, fucking, come on. No, I, don't I probably it. got secondhand from whatever was floating through the air, but yeah. uh, no, I never smoked in high school or college because I was playing basketball and I didn't want to mess oh. up my lungs. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't touch anything until after college. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, for me, opposite experience. I, <laughs> <laughs> I smoked it a lot, but I didn't, I, I never really treated it with um, kind of the respect well, the respect that it deserves, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it sounds, <laughs> it, we're, we're getting to the territory of calling your drugs medicines. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it can be. It's Which, a fun, it's a funny thing to joke about, but I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big believer in, in the intention you put behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. And marijuana is one of those where it's like, you know, if, if you're really intentional about it, you you can get something much greater out of it in terms of like creativity, et cetera. And also you can, you know, if things come up in terms of like the land of paranoia or where you get really worried about stuff or anxious about things, there's, then there's ways if you're being intentional, you can really like create, okay, what, what am I asking to be, what am I being called to look at now in myself? And like, where is this coming from and how do I center myself and be grateful and like really kind of work through those energies? Um, yeah. But I definitely find that, uh, you know, we do, uh, my wife and I do ayahuasca ceremonies, you know, every few months, I guess. Um, and it's, it's always super, uh, super enlightening. It's always, there's always some part of it that's extremely challenging or that has me look at something that I didn't want to look at. Some part of myself yeah. that's unhealed, uh, you know, <clears throat> but then, uh, but then there's always like a huge relief, you know, there is like, it's interesting that it, it, so many of these plant medicines are really, you know, they, they are work, but they're really good work. You know, if, if your intention is to like get deeper into who you are and get more connected to nature and the source that thrives through us, you know, it's, it's a really great gateway. You, you know, um, I mean, I think about, you know, the doors, right? The doors named their band the doors because they were doing a lot of different medicines and it was about the doors of reality are being pulled open, you know, by these right. medicines. I'm not saying that they were super responsible about it, uh, <laughs> you know, 
you know, RIP Jim. Sorry, buddy. Uh, went too yeah. far. But, <clears throat> you know, they're still like, they were definitely dancing in the realm of like, okay, this is, these are our instruments that we use that can open doors for us to see things that we couldn't see that we can't see in our normal day to day. Um, you know, there's so many uh, different texts and even like, you know, you can look at, you know, who knows what Holy Sacrament Jesus was drinking. All right. I'm pretty sure it was something like ayahuasca. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something well, the wine back then had some psychotropic effect. Oh, really? <clears throat> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They found wine uh storage containers like large uh drums or vats and they've scraped off the dried <clears throat> wine like resin or whatever and they found some type of um psychoactive compound in the wine uh from you know thousands of years ago so a lot hmm. of the wine from ancient rome was actually you know psychoactive they weren't just drunk all the time at dinner the, those guys they were high as hell they were up huh. <laughs> yeah. wow Okay, yeah. so what can we get our hands on some of this shit? I mean, what, I what do you do? We, we got to synthesize Rome? some old school Roman wine. Yeah, Brent, let's do it. Let's do a trip. You know I'm in. I mean? We can make All a right. microdose business out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I met some lady yesterday who does. She was like, I was like, what do you do for work? She's like, oh, I work at a, a chocolate, chocolate, choc, chocolate lottery, chocolate. How do you say, say that word? Chocolate lottery, chocolate. What do you chocolate say? a chocolate place chocolate place chocolate yeah. <laughs> and i was like oh is it the one in downtown grass valley and she's like no 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 it's an underground chocolate chocolate lottery and i was like oh you make mushroom oh chocolate. you make mushroom chocolate yeah i get it now i understand good for you that's great I feel like everybody makes mushroom chocolate now i mean in this area uh for sure yeah i've been handed <laughs> so much mushroom chocolate i have to give it away now i'm always very grateful but I got more mushroom chocolate than, you know, a high Willy Wonka. <laughs> you should give it to, you know, guests before they come to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hand out samples outside. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe not so much with the drinking. It doesn't. Yeah. Really. Do you, um, let's talk about drinking. Do you drink? Yeah. Are you a drinker? You get drunk? From time to time. Um, I'll have a glass of wine with dinner if it's, if we're out to dinner, but uh, I've I've kind of stopped drinking mostly. I, I don't really like a lot of a lot of alcohol gives me a headache now. Mm -hmm. Either when drinking it or the next day. Um, my drink of choice would be a like a tequila soda water, silver tequila soda water, okay, or, uh, or wine, like a Cab or a Chianti, a Rose. I, I, I've been to Italy a couple of times because my family's Italian, so we still have family out there. Oh, and okay. I, I'll drink, you know. I'll drink wine with almost every meal because that's just the that's what that's do. the vibe out there. That's the energy you want to match the scene that you're in, and that's always really fun. But I do find that I move a little bit slower uh, when I drink, and my my thought process is a little bit a little bit slower. So uh, I've, I've definitely cut back. Not that I ever drank a ton, but you know, in college we drank a lot. High school, I went to a party high school, so we we're pounding the original four locos at, at parties. And, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, you do a whole bit about weekend. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and it was fun, certainly fun. But, um, you know, now I, I I find I'm just not as not as interested in, in drinking as much. Yeah. Similar story to me. Yeah. I, I we uh, also, I grew up in Omaha. Um it's sort of funny that I live in Grass Valley now because uh, <laughs> it's really the opposite of Omaha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Omaha's, I mean, Omaha's great. I, I, I love Omaha and I miss you guys from Omaha and I have a lot of really good friends from Omaha, but it's not, this is, I'm definitely in hippie town. I definitely, I grew my hair out. I got a fucking mural of a moon. Somebody yeah. holding the fucking moon <laughs> yeah. behind me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I drank the fucking Kool-Aid big time. Yeah. In right. Omaha, you would have a mural of a stalk of corn behind right. you. That's right. Yeah. With Harry Husker, you know. Yeah, going, exactly. Going big red. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I grew up also party high school, uh, drinking a lot, hosting parties and whatnot. We didn't, Four Loco was not invented when I was in high school yet. I, I think actually... Maybe, maybe it was, maybe, maybe that was like the beginning, but I, that wasn't a thing. We drank like forties of, uh, 
you know, eight ball and stuff or not eight. What is it? Not eight ball. Eight balls cocaine. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> which was not a 40s thing. of cocaine. During 40s of cocaine. Uh, <laughs> right up the butt, actually. Yep. That's how we did it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, f- I feel very fortunate. Cocaine was never really a thing for me, but, um, but yeah, we dr- got drunk a lot in high school. And then I went to college in new Orleans at Loyola. Um, and so you could imagine that there was a lot of drinking going on there because there was. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, when I started doing more plant medicine ceremonies, I did ayahuasca initially to quit smoking. Actually. I was like, well, Oh, wow. Yeah. It was did sort it of, work? it totally worked. It totally worked. So what what was part of the experience that led to you quitting? So I I first of all, I guess I should back up a little bit. I I, I had a friend that I used to do a lot of Zen meditation with in LA and Santa Monica who was like, dude, you gotta try this ayahuasca, man. It is amazing. He had done like a lot of like personal development work, did the the landmark forum that work and a bunch of Zen work with me, which was really intense. And he was like, you got to try this. It's amazing. It's, it'll totally transform you, you know? Um, and, and also I had read that it was really helpful in, in curing addictions. So I had quit smoking about, I don't know, a hundred times, um, sometimes for long periods of time for like a year, for three years once, but, uh, it was really affecting me. I really felt like, you know, I, I mean, I felt like if I kept smoking for sure, I was going to get cancer. That's how I felt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so I was um, like vaping and doing other stuff. And I had read a book called The Easy Way to Stop Smoking, which is an awesome book for anybody out there who's looking to to, to stop smoking. It really like subconsciously uh, deprograms you and like de-guilts the whole thing of smoking. Um, but, and it's effective. But then also I was like, I should also try this ayahuasca thing. And I went in with the intention to quit smoking. I was like, I really want to stop smoking. That's my intention. Yeah. And, uh, and my God, it worked like so well, I came out of the experience. Um, I think the next week, like I bought some cigarettes, but then I smoked a couple of them and I was like, I don't want to do this. This is terrible. Then I had another cigarette and I puked, uh, from the experience. I, I had been drinking some wine. Um, and then, and then what happened was like, I, I would have a recurring vision that I'm convinced came out of the ayahuasca experience where I would see myself getting in my car, going to the liquor store down the street on Pico Boulevard, getting out of the car, buying the cigarettes, pulling the, opening the pack, pulling the, the, all the stuff off, taking a drag, feeling like fucking total dog shit. Uh, and then finishing the cigarette. Cause I don't want to waste a cigarette, which is just preposterous. Yeah. And that image would come into my head. That whole scene would play out in my head every time that I wanted a cigarette. And uh, I haven't, I haven't, I mean, I'm a non smoker. I don't smoke. It's been uh, like three and a half years. And I've been drinking Mullen, M U L L E I N. I don't know if you know that stuff. It's what like is that? Supplement. It's like a supplement that helps you clean your lungs out, apparently, man. If you got oh, wow. a fewer smoker or something like that. Uh, I've been drinking that or take, you know, you take it like in a teaspoon. It's like got a little dropper under the tongue three times a day and uh it works i I feel like that i feel like i'm i'm healed i'm healed (laughs) (laughs) hallelujah that's awesome dude that's cool i mean the 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 significance of the change that somebody can experience when they go into you know a medicine journey like that with rock solid intention and and like an openness and a willingness to change it can be profound that's really cool yeah. Yeah. It was really good for me. I think, I mean, we should probably do a caveat here. You know, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Uh, yeah, of course. And, you know, definitely take care of yourself. Make sure you're doing it with somebody who really knows what they're doing. And, and uh, also if it gets weird, just, you know, pray. That's pray. the time to pray. Pray on it. Do you, are you a prayer? Do you, do you do prayer? <laughs> uh, I guess it, it, I don't like, ask i don't talk to god i don't really pray to god i guess um you pray to the devil i pray to the yeah I pray, i'm more of a satanist i'd say <laughs> okay uh, good that's good i saw <laughs> i saw one of your skits with the satan costume that was yeah really yeah hilarious. actually a good job thanks <laughs> um, so it's good to know that was real yeah yeah, yeah sweet. 
but yeah, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll speak what I want uh, into the into the space. Yeah, I'll, I'll into the cosmos. Do affirmations, yeah, um, which is a form of prayer. Um, I have a mantra, uh, which is a form of prayer. Um, so yeah, I'd say I, I pray, but maybe not in the most traditional fundamentalist uh, version of what prayer could be. You know? <laughs> yeah, the fundamentalist version. That's yeah. that's my that's what I go to for sure. <laughs> Um, that's great. Or is, is your mantra private or is that something you could share? It is private. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get it. It is, is it private. Trans- I can't tell anybody or it won't work. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Transcendental meditation mantra? Uh, no, it, I, it wasn't something that was given to me. And I don't know that I practice transcendental meditation. Um, but, or at least I've not been trained in transcendental meditation, but I do repeat my mantra over and over again when I meditate. So I guess that's a form of it. Yeah. Because that's cool. what they do as well. But yeah, you know, I, I, I wasn't raised going to church. I wasn't raised with religion of any kind. So I, I was encouraged to learn about different religions, um, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, Catholicism. Taoism. Um, <clears throat> I don't know much about any of them, but I know some about all of them, and I'm still trying to learn and and broaden my own understanding of what people believe and why. Uh, you know, I haven't read the Bible. I'd like to read the Bible, um, and uh, we should you know, do that together. We should. We should take a Bible <laughs> class together, and we should be super fucking high every yeah. time we go. Uh, I like it. The Bible's probably a trip to read. Mushrooms uh, and the yeah. Bible. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> but yeah, you know, the my mom encouraging me to to learn about these different belief systems helped me form my own unique belief system, which is really rooted in the the core tenet of all religions, which is to treat people with respect and love. That's yeah. that's the base level. And then mm-hmm. you can just add to that. Um but yeah, I didn't. I didn't grow up with a, a strict religious background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be nice to people. That's really what it. That's my religion. I like it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I have this uh, painting of Dalai Lama <clears throat> in my hallway, and with the quote that says, uh, "My religion is simple. My religion is kindness." Yep. Which I think is good. Good job, Dolly. You know what I mean? Yep. You fucking nailed it. You nailed it, buddy. Great job. Nailed High five it. to the line. No notes. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. He just fucking spew, spewed it. Spooged <laughs> it. He spooged it right out of yep. his face. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah, it's interesting. I, 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 um, I, I, sim- I, I guess I did grow up going to church. Um, and it was Christian church, but it was very like relaxed Christianity. And, which I feel super fortunate about. There was no fire and brimstone. There was no like hate gay people kind of thing. It was very like inclusive. And the guy caught, talked about golf a lot, you know? <clears throat> um, and there was like some prayer, you know, we did, we would do prayers and we would sing in church, but again, it was always, you know, like sort of good natured kind of prayer. Mm-hmm. What's, what's interesting. I think for me, like now in, uh, at this stage in my life, it's super important. Like I meditate, um, also, um, every day, which has been just like super important for my sanity. You know, mm-hmm. um, I had a, uh, when I was in college, I had a Jesuit priest, uh, who taught Zen, which was very bizarre. Father Ren, amazing, amazing teacher. Um, and he would point to when he was teaching meditation, he would point to that there are four, forms of prayer. There's a petition for something you want, penitence for something that you did wrong, gratitude for something that you're thankful for, and then non-image, non-verbal prayer, which is like the highest form of prayer, which is just meditation where you're just sitting Mm. and you're just doing your mantra, you know, or you're just breathing, you know, you're just being, you're just allowing all the thoughts to come up that are coming up and be the way that they are and just ride that sucker out, you know, for as, as long as feels, feels good. That's been, I found that's been super helpful for me. Um, it's also been super helpful, like in 
I don't know about you. I don't know what your ayahuasca experience experiences have been like. I, I have had it get kind of weird, or or even also like uh, you know acid or or mushrooms, like these substances that we play with. The can paranoia can creep in that energy, whatever you want to call it, whether it's like internal or external or just subconscious. You know, like if those things start to take over during the those kind of journeys, like it's really important to just center yourself, start being grateful and like praying to whatever source you want to pray to. I found that super helpful. Is that something that you've experienced as well? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, these substances are so powerful. It's it's uncontrollable at times. And um, that's why I would never just blindly recommend that everybody go do these things and try them. I do recommend that everybody look into them and kind of expand your awareness for what's out there and, and how it's worked for other people. Uh, because it can be super intense and all the preparation in the world can't prepare you for something you might experience while you're, you're super deep on a, on a journey. Um, but you know, I, I went to Sultara recently. It's a ayahuasca retreat center out in Costa Rica. Sultara. Uh, Sultara. Sultara. For a, for a week long, uh, retreat and the facilitators there are great. And one of the lessons they they really pushed toward for pushed on everybody was to carry your intentions uh, as as strongly and closely as you can, but leave your expectations at the door because mm-hmm. you can't expect you can't expect anything to happen. You can intend for something to happen, but you have to be open to that intention evolving into a different type of experience. And that was really key. You know, I, I, I definitely was having experiences that I did not expect to have. Um, but I, I, I was grateful that I had, you know, the right resources and, and people there to, to support that, that unexpected journey. Um, cause things can get intense. It's, they can be, a, it's, it can be a very intense space. Yeah. Yeah. Super intense. Um, yeah, that's great. And what was the experience like down there? Was it like you did medicine every day or you did? It was cool. It was a, it was a seven day retreat. We did two nights in a row and then had a down day and then had two nights in a row, uh, with an off day on either end. So it was, it was the most I had done, uh, prior to that, I had done a two day back to back trip. Um, but this was great. This allowed for more integration time, more time to speak with the facilitators, more time on the land, more time to go inward and, and journal or write or reflect and prepare. And uh, there's more of an opportunity to learn about where this medicine comes from, how it's been stewarded forward by the, the Shipibo people of South America. And that was pretty beautiful to learn about. Um, and it, it kind of helped us all build a deeper sense of trust and understanding and, and gratitude for the origin of uh, the medicine. And, and I think that really helped everybody get something, you know, constructive from the experience. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. And yeah. was it, is it like lying down, like you lay down the whole time or are they sitting? Uh, it was in a maloka. It was, it was all, it was all done very traditionally. So they had a maloka, you know, a big wooden hut, out there Mm. everybody had their own pad and upon drinking we'd be in silence for about 30 minutes in the darkness at night typically sitting upright the whole time some people would lie down on their side um at a certain point you know one or two people would fall asleep at at a certain point but i'm typically sitting upright the whole time usually with my eyes closed um and uh and it was it was just great it was it was it was cool to be in such a traditional setting and to see the process unfold in really the closest way we could possibly get to how the uh, the Shipibo people traditionally would carry out ceremonies. Mm-hmm. That's super cool. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, I, I I have not sat in that uh, in that way before. 
Um, but I'm definitely interested. So maybe I'll check it out. It's called Soltara. Yeah. Soltara. Yeah. They have a couple Soltara. locations down there. Yeah. Is there a discount code? Uh, I think there is. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Uh, let me get there it. There is a discount code. You have a discount code? I think I do. <laughs> I think That's what this is all about, code. everybody. We're, yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> we're get selling commissions, discounts though. to ayahuasca. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You don't get commissions. Oh no, okay. I said I don't want. I don't want a commission. Just I said just, I don't want a commission. All right, no. just give it to the people. Just give it That's to the good. people. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Let me see. Uh, Pella two hundred. Pella two hundred at Soltara. Yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. I'm gonna fucking use it. I'm doing it right now. I'm going. Do it. <laughs> Um, I have to go to the bathroom really quick. Cool. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with Brent Pella. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> Soltara. Doing some, uh, doing some ayahuasca, everybody. Pella 200 <laughs> is your discount code <laughs> to get your mind completely blown at Soltara. That's get a right. discount on talking to God. <laughs> Only on lunacy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Let's talk about, uh, we're back and we want to talk about ecstatic dance. Go. Ecstatic dance. Uh, ecstatic dance is a fun time. Um, I've been to a couple of them. Uh, I'm usually have you been up here? stretching. Okay. Uh, I have not been to an ecstatic dance in Nevada City. It's, it's kind of, I mean, our ecstatic dance is kind of the, the best ecstatic dance. I, that's why I moved here. It's, oh, yeah. You know, not at all. Not even remotely. <laughs> now I'm up here. <laughs> There's a lot of there are a lot of amazing dancers up there. I you know I, we went my wife and I went last night and um, it was really great. I actually saw your friend uh, uh, Nate, who I keep meaning to like talk to and stuff. He was dancing with somebody. Now I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna tackle him next time. Yeah, do it. Him. Yeah, it's, he's friends with a bunch of friends of mine, including you. Um, but. Uh, the smells of ecstatic dance are it's punchy. real ripe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Ripe. People are just anti deodorant altogether. You know, uh, <laughs> I guess. No, they, they just make... rub sandalwood all over their body. Just dry sandalwood. Right. And matcha powder on their feet. <laughs> yeah. And then you get that nice ripe <laughs> scent. Yeah. Earthy. Yeah. Very earthen. Uh, yeah, real organic. Laden. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pungent. Yep. Uh up in up in up at the Miners Foundry in Nevada City. Um yeah, we always laugh about that. My wife and I are always she whenever she's dancing, she's looking for like a the least smelly spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's tough because halfway through the whole place just turns into a hot box. It's I mean, it does it, mostly. It's not quite, it's not that, at least last night it wasn't that, <clears throat> that hot because it's still sort of cool here in the evenings. But um, yeah, but yeah, I'm always, uh, first of all, I, I mean, joking aside, like that experience of getting together and dancing with people in silence uh, to music that is not, not spirit. I mean, it's, it's sort of like house music. It feels like most of the time, honestly, but um that experience of dancing with people moving with people whether you're like actually dancing with someone or not is like it's a really beautiful practice like i, I i'm a huge fan like i really enjoy i like dancing anyway but it's fun to do it in a group of people where you know there's some like positive intention around it um so and and, and we brought um we brought my brother-in-law who's from canada from toronto and he had never seen anything like it. And he was like, dude, this is amazing. I cool. love it. Yeah. Which I, we were shocked about. I wasn't sure how he would take it. Uh, but he he was all in. Awesome. Um, yeah. Just the energy there is really good. But yeah, people, people don't fucking wear deodorant, Brent. I don't know. They sure don't. No. <laughs> I, and they don't shower uh, before coming. I don't know. Yep. I think it's mostly men. But, you know, one never knows. Yeah, uh, I, there's something about I think there's like a secret machismo of like um, getting people to smell your scent, which I think is bullshit. You know what I mean? We don't want to smell your <laughs> yeah. scent, guys. OK, yeah, let's yeah. Some ecstatic dancers fucking put some deodorant on. All right. <laughs> Even the, you know, the Toms from Maine. OK, that stuff. Yeah, works. there's non-toxic. There's fluoride free deodorant. I'm yeah. Sure. 
<laughs> I bought some at the farmer's market in Nevada City that's made by some guy. And I got to say, it works two days in a row. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really that's amazing. what you need. I'll get you yeah. some next time you're up here. Oh, There's see. an ecstatic dance yeah. they do on the beach sometimes. And everybody wears headphones. And nice. they're outdoors like a silent disco ecstatic dance. Yeah, it's awesome. I've been to that mm-hmm. one a few times. I did that one in LA too. That one's le- way less smelly. Way less smelly. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're you outside. Smell the ocean. Yeah, that's really all you can smell is the ocean. Okay, so you go to a lot of transformational festivals. You're in this world. Uh, how many people do you know named Love? <laughs> a couple for sure. There, uh-huh. there have been a few. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I love meeting people with the with festival names. I've met I've met a Jaguar, I've met Luna, I've met Tsunami. I've Ooh, met, Tsunami. Yeah, that was a cool one. Male um, or female? Male. Tsunami. That was a male. Ah, naturally. Uh I've met Solstice. I've met um, Solstice. <laughs> uh man, I feel like there's been some other ones. Um yeah, the the festival names. I, I haven't found my own yet. I'm waiting to be blessed at a festival by somebody who can give me one that really resonates. But until then, I'll go by Brent. Isn't it? I heard it was you had some skit where your name was something muffin. Oh, that was yeah. I did this video called MTV Cribs at a music festival, and the character was uh Waterfall Muffin. There you go. Waterfall yeah. muffin. That's good. Yeah. Classic. I think I, I might go by mixing bowl. <laughs> I feel like that's strong. Uh, yeah. Have you ever tried a, an adrenal drink? No. What is that? That's fresh squeezed orange juice. This is part of my morning routine. I wanted to tell you about it. fresh squeezed uh-huh. orange juice. Okay. <laughs> from oranges from Fiji, preferably. It's a quarter teaspoon dead sea salt. And then a quarter teaspoon cream of tartare. Whoa, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. good? It's good. It's good. It's delicious. It's like super good for your adrenals. Wakes you up. What does the cream of tartare do? Well, that's... I. So I make that myself from my balls. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't... You know, actually, it's super high in potassium. Uh, and so it's kind of like a... Uh, Aubrey Marcus is he's also into that whole thing of like he drinks those element um drinks. Are, yeah, those those are yeah. awesome. That's how I got into those drinks is that guy. Um he was giving them out for free at the at the first Arcadia. But um yeah, it's super high in potassium, cream of tartar. And then the orange juice is super high in vitamin C, and then the salt is like really good at, at helping you get your electrolytes going. Yeah. Nice. Big time. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. My my morning drink is water with lemon juice and salt. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I do some of that too sometimes. Sometimes a little bit of shilajit in my coffee oh, yeah. or or in water. But yeah. Typically water with lemon and salt. I'm a big fan of the shilajit. I I really like it. Even though it just completely smells like manure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Luckily it doesn't add too much of a taste. So yeah. It's wild Mustang manure is how yeah. I describe it. It really, <laughs> it definitely impacts your coffee flavor if you drink it in coffee, which I, mm-hmm. I tend to. Um, but now I'm used to it and I drink it. Like, I don't even really know what it does. I mean, do you, do you know what it does? Yeah. My buddy has a Shilajit company called Legit Gold okay. and they're rad. He, he gets it straight from the source out in the Himalayas. Um, so I, I did a good amount of research uh, when, uh, when I started learning about his business and it's just packed with minerals, you know, it's, um, it's created from the plant and animal matter decaying through the rocks into the, the mountains of, of the Himalayas and picking up all kinds of micronutrients and minerals on its way to becoming a resin that actually starts seeping out of the rocks and then gets scraped up and refined a little bit to get rid of the toxic stuff and uh, and then shipped out as a consumer product. So it's got ev- almost everything, copper, iron, magnesium, potassium, calcium. Um, you, there's like over 70 minerals, I think, in, in hmm. Shilajit. 
and it's been used in Ayurvedic medicine for, I don't know, hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Um, and uh, it's there, there are a couple studies done that show it can help with um, balancing your hormones, your hormone levels, uh, helping to <clears throat> produce uh, testosterone in men. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was something else? I, it shows early signs of helping cognitive function. Yes. Um, all kinds of good things. Yeah. But don't quote me on it. Definitely do your research on it. I'm it's fucking quoting you, Brett. You I'm, sound very knowledgeable. I dig it. Basically, I feel like you got your own fucking Shilajit company, you know? I, I wish I did. Pelagit. You should call it Pelagit. Pelagit. That's free. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, amazing. That's great. Is it, it's not called pure gold, is it? The, your friend's company? Uh, Legit Gold. Legit Gold. Okay. I bought some from yeah. Elixart the other day. It was called pure gold, I think. But I, I got yeah. into it because I, of the cognitive thing. Cause like my dad had Parkinson's disease and my, um, my grandma on my mom's side had Alzheimer's disease. And so I don't want any of that shit going on. You know what I mean? I want to keep the fucking... It's already pretty empty in here. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to, to oh. decay it any further. Yeah. No, no, no. It's got I gotta keep it clean. Whatever. Give me the fucking new tropics. All right. <laughs> Let's go. The yeah. alpha brain. The yeah. Gila Jeet. I'm all into it. <laughs> Do you think that the world is coming to an end? I hope not, because I'm having a pretty good time. So I'd yeah. like to be around a little longer, um, but, you know, we're going to see what happens in the aftermath of this election this year. And it is crazy. Um, hopefully these aliens show up soon. And I'm fucking ready dude. Else to talk about. Yeah, me yeah. too. Me too. I saw yeah. your sketches on that. That's hilarious. The, <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to envision what you believe the moon be like is real. Show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You believe in the moon? Come on. Um, yeah, I would love if the aliens showed up. Uh, how did you do the costumes for that, by the way? Yeah, that's a prosthetic. It takes three hours to put on. It's uh, it's pretty intense. Wow. So we're in the makeup chair for three hours, getting it glued on and painted and all that. And then we usually shoot for the whole day, and then it takes about an hour, hour and a half to take it all off. Um, but it's super fun. It's really fun. And I'm, I'm stoked people have been digging it because we got a lot more coming with these alien videos. Oh, that's great. I'm stoked about it. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, and hopefully they do show up soon because it'd be nice to see, you know, a real outside perspective toward humankind. And maybe that's what we need to start treating each other with a little more respect is to understand that we're not alone out here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it's a, I don't know. I've, I've had, um, I've, I've had a lot of abductions personally, anal abductions. Not really, uh-huh. really. Aside from the coffee enema that I had this morning, there were no aliens involved. Yeah, you abducted in yourself. That coffee. I really did. I really abducted myself. <laughs> I highly recommend. Um, yeah. I did actually see a. I saw a. I saw a UFO one time, an unidentified flying object. Uh, before they started calling them whatever the fuck they're calling them now, uh, UAPs, I think, or something. Um, yeah. Yep that was following my car was like a red light in the sky, but it wasn't a, um, it wasn't an airplane. And, uh, my buddy was driving. I had another friend, we were doing a film thing and he was driving in the car behind me. We both saw it and we were talking about it on the phone and, uh, and then, and it followed us for a really long time. And then, or at least it was in line with our cars going north on the five to San Francisco from LA. And then uh, at some point it just fucking took a right turn, like a giant right, like, like not, not an airplane right turn, like a fucking, like it just took off. Oh, wow. Right angle turn gone. So that's my only alien encounter. I don't know. That's a trip. Yeah. That, that's what a lot of people describe seeing. These, mm-hmm. these different crafts that just can turn and operate in a way that challenges our known laws of air travel um, yeah. and physics. So, yeah, that's By a the way, that was, I've never seen anything like that, but I wish. It was like, that was back in, uh, it was like 99, 1999. So it was before um, 
pre drones. It was not a drone. They didn't have drones yeah. back then. Just for you know, for the naysayers out there. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. I, I find that there are a lot of people that do think that the world is coming to an end and that it's going to collapse and we all better be careful. And I uh, don't share that notion. I mean, I think it's definitely possible that and probable that a lot of like the levers of power, you know, that we're moving out of the whole empire mentality and into hopefully into a, a more integrated cooperative uh, way of living that you know respects all life and isn't trying to be fucking greedy um, yeah. and I think that's kind of that's a lot of like what but who knows we could also just fuck it all up um, <laughs> I tend to be more on the optimistic front I feel like you know it's going yeah I, I, I'm an optimist you know whether it's a naive optimism or not I don't know but I I see a lot of good from humanity and I like to think that it outweighs the bad and um, you know, with this whole movement, the psychedelics movement, the health and wellness movement, the uh, increased interest in individualism and a, a decreased need for reliance on these big systems that we've created from big pharma to big medicine, to big food, big agriculture. Um, I, I feel like those things in combination are just going to continue to push us forward in a good way. Uh, so I'll, I'll hold on to the faith that that'll outweigh any, any negative um, that people are, are putting out. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, yeah. humanity. We fucking got <laughs> Yeah. That. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Go do some ayahuasca. Look at yourself. Be nice to people. <laughs> Drink Let's water. rock this mother out. Drink water. Yeah. Do a yeah. cold plunge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drink some Sheila gin for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, great. Um, so I asked this of all my guests, Brent. Uh, for you, what is sacred and what is insane? What is sacred and what is insane? Uh, uh, what is sacred and what is insane? I think everything is insane. I think life is insane. Um. It's the, the trippiest thing in the world is just being alive and having some of the experiences that we have, even on a day to day basis. Um, you know, what's what's the things I hold sacred are um, my health, for sure. I hold I hold my health pretty sacredly. My body, I treat my body. I try to treat my body with uh, a sacred level of respect. But I also think that people use that term sacred a little too loosely sometimes and it does become insane. So I, I like to call everything sacred uh, and me and my buddy have a running joke where we're just like, Hey, are you hungry? Yeah. You want to get a burrito? Yeah. Let's get a sacred burrito. <laughs> so, you know, I don't think, uh, I don't think we should hold too many things too sacredly or else we're just going to trap ourselves in this limited belief system of um, where, where we take things too seriously. It's, it's that, when, when when you're taking everything as sacred, you're treating a lot of these these life practices and habits as as sacred. Uh, I feel like you might start to lose a sense of self awareness, um, which is what I try to push through in, in a lot of my work. Is is let's have a better sense of self awareness and awareness of kind of the ridiculous nature that that uh, we operate in with certain belief systems like spirituality or politics or things like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, I think life is insane. I think everything is insane. The, you know, you mm -hmm. go to a music festival, you have an insane time. You uh, experience a show or you're trying to build a, trying to build a career is, is insane. You know, you're trying to get people to like the thing that you're making or doing. That's an insane thing. It's a crazy thing. But um, if you have the, the, a certain level of, respect for the process um you can turn the insane into the sacred and vice versa i hope yeah. that doesn't make any sense because it didn't <laughs> no it was total nonsense good job uh we'd have cut that out just kidding no, that's, gonna go, that's gonna go in the front uh no that was great that was perfect uh it's beautiful yeah definitely I, i'm definitely in line with the don't take it too seriously concept because then it, i feel like that's when it just goes to shit you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah. So don't take it too seriously. Nobody really knows what the fuck is going on anyway. 
We're all just and, doing our best. And here we are. Yep. All right, everybody. If you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com backslash lunacy podcast. Much love. Thank you, Brent Pella, so much for coming on the show, dude. I'm a huge fan. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. And uh, the new comedy special is called Conscious Bro. It's out on YouTube. Yeah. And I got tour dates out at brentpella.com slash shows. Always beautiful. updated. That's beautiful. Awesome. And if you haven't checked out his Instagram, it's fucking hilarious. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks, It'll make man. your day. All right. Much love, everybody. See ya.